And welcome to the drip. This is Scott. I'm going to be your tour guide, as always, leading you in the direction uh, through the dark. Make sure your seat is in the upright position. You're buckled in. Life preservers will be provided for those. You have to be uh, this tall to ride this ride. I am holding my hand up. Uh, you can't see it, but you have to be this tall. Welcome, guys. We got another video for you. I know I have to get that craziness out of me. It's just like, you know, you start things up and it's you really, I just need to get it cranking, get my blood pumping, get kind of excited. I'm so glad that you're here and that you're watching another video. And if this is your first, I am going to use mind control to make you go to another video and keep on watching. Also, I'm going to convince you that if you're on Instagram to follow me at KC Blade Drip, more photography of certain different types, knives, things I review, as well as subscribing, liking this video, all that other good stuff. We are at the home of the 150% guarantee where 100% of the time I'm going to be over 50% right Every knife has a story. Guys, the knife that I'm going to be talking about today, I know it's not going to be one of those super popular videos, probably wouldn't have a ton of views. People aren't going to be necessarily searching for it. But as we continue our journey together over time, uh, I'm going to pull out stuff from my collection, things that maybe I started collecting or different reasons, you know, could be years ago, could be obscure stuff, could be funky, freaky, deaky, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and this is, I'm going to appeal to certain people that maybe like this particular type of style or knife. I'm not for everybody. The chosen few, so... I, this has been on my heart for a while. I wanted to do this. Like I guess it's uh, kind of like a show and tell slash little review type. Um, give you a look at a knife here. And I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. Just kind of in the back of my head thinking, you know, when am I going to do this? And so I pulled it out today and I thought, you know, I'm just going to do it. Okay. Uh, this is a Browse Blades. This is called the Razorback. Now I had done another uh, little video about a, a previous browse blade, um, giving a little bit of information, some details about Jason, uh, his how he got going and such with uh, knife making, designing, things like that. Great guy. Um, so I'm not gonna cover a lot of the previous details about the company or him. Uh, typically, he'll release smaller batches of knives, still pumping them out, still doing great work um, that you can even buy or find today. Certain styles or designs you may not find, just depending on when they came out. Uh, so this one, as I said, uh, this is the Razorback. This particular knife came out... This is 2022 now, so this is in June 2022. I believe this came out in 20, the end of 2016. It was right about six years ago. And the thing that appealed me overall first when I was looking at this knife was look at it. Now, a lot of times and when I first got started, I don't even know if it was collecting at the time, but when I started buying a few knives here and there, I was attracted to certain styles and designs, and this one looked, when I saw, this was actually released, I signed up on Mass Drop. So what they would do is you signed up, you'd get a certain price, and they would release and drop it. This is a, a 65 of 250. I know they have, I think, three different variations of this type of knife that were done in 250 batch, uh, per batch that they released and then they may have had another one but I know that there's you really can't find these anywhere uh, nowadays and I they haven't produced them for years 
uh, again, you know, I'm over 50% right. So this knife, and I don't have the packaging for this, the box, that kind of kicking myself. When I first started getting knives, I didn't a lot of times. I got rid of the box because I'm like, I'm going to use it. I don't need the box. What, you know, so I got rid of it. So I don't have it. But uh, I saw the recurve blade. I saw the handle. I saw the design. And when they talked about this thing, I was just immediately pulled to it. And I, I was like, I want that. So I signed up on Mass Drop, got this knife sent to me. Um, the first thing when I received this knife, I noticed was this thing is little. I'm talking, it's to me, it's tiny. Okay. And really being on film here, this, I know it doesn't do it justice because sometimes when you're holding things towards the camera, it can look a lot bigger and deceiving. And you could be like, oh man, that looks like a good size. Let's, I'm going to write away, let's measure and weigh this thing because I want you to have a, a true idea about this. So the blade is like basically three inches, maybe just a little bit over it. As you can see, the handle is right about three and three quarters ish. So overall, this thing is like seven inches. Okay, so, it, you know, essentially you've got like four inch handle and about a three inch blade. So that, that in itself, I mean, is pretty small, but those numbers are probably even bigger than what it really seems when you have it in your hand. I mean, the usable handle here behind this choil is really, I mean, you can see it just disappears in my hand. So I thought, you know, this thing is tiny, it's small. I'm not, so I, I carried this for a while. I did like the design, I thought it was nice. It came pretty doggone sharp. I have heard some complaints that sometimes his blades don't come super sharp. Um, this one, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't like going to uh, probably shear a lot of paper or, you know, do a bunch of slicing to a great extent, but it was sharp. Still pretty sharp. Um, now let's weigh it. Because I want you to be able to see how much this thing weighs. 2.3. So yeah, it's 2.3 ounces. Very lightweight. Very small. It's a good flipping action to it. Now, the Razorback, it's a acid titanium. Uh, this thing was about $250 when I got it. So it was not a inexpensive knife. And I think they'd consider this like a mid-tech. Got your maker's mark here on the front of the blade. And then you've got the numbering on the top of the back of the blade here. Other than that, you don't really, you don't have any other marks on here or engravings. As I said, it's actually, this is a acid titanium. It's a spear point blade uh, or point or tip, spear point with a recurve. Um, it's a hollow grind, if you can kind of tell by looking at the, the grind here. So, I mean, the, the geometry and the look, to me, I think it's a beautiful grind and a beautiful blade. Even today, guys, okay, so this was like about 2016, I believe, um, when this came out. So, nowadays in 2022, you have a lot of people to, uh, that are making knives that have a recurve blade. Um so, I mean, it's a, it's become, I don't know if he was necessarily one of the first people, but Jason Browse is known for a lot of his very unique designs and kind of crazy lines and uh, things that he had done even years ago, which a lot of it was even before the time, you know? 
So then the acid stone wash, it really helps to kind of protect it because it is a D2 uh, tool steel that he uses. I think he uses that on pretty much all of his blades. It's a strong, good steel. It just tends to, uh, it's not that great with corrosion. So having that uh, acid watch on this particular blade, uh, the acid stone wash really would help. Matching titanium frame lock handle as well. So that's another thing that I had liked was, and I've said before on some other videos, I love the titanium, full titanium handle. Pocket clip, full titanium. You've got your steel lock bar here. The lockup really wasn't that great on this. In fact, the one air, one of the areas on this knife that was kind of a little disappointing is when I deploy this once in a while, it's such an early lockup that I'll have to kind of push it over a little bit to have it lock up tight. Now, once it is locked up, this is secure. It's not what wiggling or wobbling or anything. So it's got a secure lockup once it is in place. But that was one thing that was a little bit disappointing when you slide that over. The centering is pretty spot on on this. I think I maybe had to adjust the pivot just a little bit in the past because I had carried this a little bit. The flipper action is uh, on the Browse bearing system pivot. So I think it's referred to as the BBS is what he calls it, Browse bearing system. So it's pretty smooth. I mean, when you flick it out, I will say, see how it didn't lock into place. I will say that the flipper, there's no jimping on the flipper. It is high enough in line here that when you get it, it flips good. But it kind of, if you sit around and you play with this a while, it your finger will kind of become tender from this fl the, the flipper up here. It's not the most... It's not the most comfortable design for this flipper right here. So. It's a nice, unique, uh, kind of compact design. And I also did like how, you know, one of the things I said, it was pretty small. I did like the fact that you know, I could put this in my pocket if I had some shorts or something on, and it's so lightweight that I could just pull it out and use it. Now, the blade design a lot of times is a blade design that would be used more or less in line with a self-defense type style because you have a good pierce on here. The top of your swedge where the blade is, and you have a nice uh, kind of a thick, beefy profile at the top that thins out towards the tip along this swedge which is actually, again, it's beautifully done. So you can pierce really well. This recurve area here, if you are to cut into something, okay, like let's say I'm cutting here, as you slice and slide back, this ridge right here will actually act as another, it'll go take it deeper into whatever you're cutting. So this is very effective if you go to chop at or slice something. It's just kind of interesting that they would do it on such a small blade because this area where this point is, where the grind changes from the recurve, if you go using this to cut wood, whittling, or doing anything with it, it'll hang up right here on this edge. This will give you a spot that you will snag up. It's not too fluid. So it really is designed just to kind of slice and to puncture deep into things. So that just a little thought about the blade itself and this particular type design. Uh, does again, it has like a smooth deployment. I mean, for the most part, this lock bar pisses me off the way it doesn't see. It did it again. That, that's just garbage right there, guys. And when you pay $250, for a knife of any kind, you're, you shouldn't be having that happen. So I'll keep this in my collection because it's one of my 
kind of unique older knives that I got, but as far as carrying it or having it be dependable, it's not, unfortunately. So, but it is the bearings themselves. It is nice and fluid whenever you deploy it. So that feels good. Now, another thing is on the inside of this, as you guys see, look there. See how it's milled out on both sides? So that's to help further reduce the weight on here. It's got some gunk up in there. You see dust and stuff. But you can see it's also milled out. So we have a completely open construction, which, woo, you wouldn't be able to tell it, but it's for easy cleaning. Um, so that you basically have a completely open design on the handle which is nice, I like that. You've got your standoffs, two of them here. Just a little barrel, like barrel spacers. You do have a few kind of sharp edges on this handle. It's another thing, if you grab it, see how it, right here, when you put your finger here and here, it kind of lands on this little point here. And when you squeeze on it, I mean, you're kind of, gripping it you can feel that this pocket clip isn't as comfortable either and with see the little point on here on the end of it well that little point will jag on your pants and getting this thing in and out that little area here will catch all the time and slide and if you use your fingernail to pick this up sometimes it'll kind of not it looks great because look at the streamline you see how the, the line just follows right here along the whole handle of the knife? How all of the lines have purpose here? All of the milling. This is a 3D milled pocket clip. It's for tip up, carry only. You can't go to the left. But I think that this knife overall, whereas I still think it's a sexy design and it looks nice, uh, the performance, it really isn't for me living up to what my expectations were. I wouldn't necessarily say that I would recommend this to go buy this for a couple of hundred dollars. There is so much uh, more, I hate to say it, but... I'm transparent and I think there's a lot of other things, especially nowadays that you can get. Um, it's a special piece for me. I can appreciate what it is and what was done with this particular blade, but I wouldn't nowadays recommend getting or searching for this. I just appreciate you watching. If you've made it this long, just listen to me talk about it because uh, there's not a lot of people that just do a do honest type uh, no bullshit reviews out there and just kind of let you look and talk about something without having some hidden agenda. So, you know, Browse Blade does a great job with his knives. This one uh, to me just fell a little bit short, still looks sexy. It just, sometimes you gotta look a little more than sexy and you gotta have a little more that you're bringing to the table. With that guys, uh, remember, remember our pets, remember our vets. This is a, a very important day and age. We always want to make those feel special that gave everything for us to have our freedoms and rights. And then our furry little guys, our non-furry guys, the ones that are part of our family, make sure they're loved and cared for, get what they need, and they're not someone else's problem. And uh, I'll be bringing more knife videos in the future to you, more commentary, more insight things that uh, we can be a part of each other's lives, even on some small little level. I'm very thankful for that. You guys being able to sit there and listen to me, whether it's on a cell phone, TV, computer, however you choose to bring me into your life. I'm here. I am aware. I respond to comments. I encourage it. You guys are amazing people. I wouldn't trade anything for where I'm at right now at this moment. Guys, stay sharp, my friends, and until we meet again, hasta la vista. I'm out.